starting recording. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for June 26th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. That's where the money comes from to pay us who work on CircuitPython. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. That's a Discord invitation. We hold the meeting in the, in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign circuit Pythonistas Discord role in the Adafruit server. I mentioned the notes document. There is a Google doc called the notes document that accompanies this meeting and recording. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the description. There's a link to it. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read out loud during the meeting. Uh, this meeting is held in five parts. Uh, I won't describe them in detail because we'll get to each of them. Community news, state of Perkut Python libraries and Blinka, hug reports, status updates, and in the weeds which is optional at the end. All right, with that, we will get to the first item, which is uh, community news, and I will add a timestamp. Here we go. And it looks like it's on track. Okay, so um, this news comes from these, our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out on email via email on Tuesday mornings. You can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python or hardware projects to share or find content that you'd like to see included in the newsletter, please consider contributing. You can open a PR on GitHub, uh, uh, at sign Ann Engineer, and contact at, at sign Ann Engineer on Twitter with the hashtag pound sign circuit python or email cpnews at adafruit.com with the information and hopefully a link to whatever it is. All right, so we'll go ahead. Um, so some of this is taken from the draft newsletter and I add something about uh, the uh, 8.2 circuit python 8.2.0 release candidate at the top here. So um, first item, uh, circuit python 8.2.0 release candidate zero was released uh, last week. Uh, as with the last beta, the notable changes to 8.2.0 since 8.1.0 are a bunch of bug fixes and minor enhancements, some new boards, but mainly continued enhancement of SynthIO and um, RP2040 uh, alarm.sleep memory has been implemented. Okay, next item um, are two things about podcasts that involve CircuitPython. So Katni Rembor was interviewed on the Teaching Python podcast. We're excited to have Katni Rembor, I'll just quote from um, the blurb for that. We're excited to have Katni Rembor from Adafruit as our special guest who has contributed extensively to the CircuitPython platform from beginner guides to advanced projects. We delve into CircuitPython, a version of Python designed for microcontrollers. Created for beginners and educational purposes, it provides a unique approach to learning Python. Katni enlightens us on the vast applications of CircuitPython, ranging from environmental sensing to assistive technologies for people with disabilities. All right, uh, next up is about Todd Kurt. 
who appeared on the Real Python podcast. Christopher Bailey at the Real Python podcast interviews Circuit Pythonista Todd Kurt. Todd has been working with embedded electronics for a long time and has been an active member of the Arduino community. He recently started to build projects using Circuit Python, and it has become his preferred prototype method. So check out the Real Python podcast for that. And then finally, um, we'll mention um, about Adafruit hacking commercial toys, uh, cu cu currently baby toys. Adafruit's Lady Ada has been hacking the baby Einstein toy for baby Ada. She now has a custom ESP32 S2 board with an SD card to replace the original board. Um, with CircuitPython, it now plays any song selected on the SD card. So this baby Einstein toy played music and flashed lights, and it now does all that uh, 10 times better than it did before. So check it out. Um, there's a link in the notes for that. So as I mentioned, all this stuff comes from the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. Um, the archives are in adafruitdaily.com, category slash category slash circuit python. Um, feel free to contribute, as I mentioned before, and there are more details about how to contribute in the notes document. All right, so now we'll move on uh, to the next section, which is the state of circuit python, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, this report contains information of the previous seven days. Any changes made today are not included in this report. So first of all, we'll give our overall statistics. So this, this, this section is a quantitative a review of what's been happening in CircuitPython in the last week, mainly having to do with what's been happening on GitHub. So that's kind of most of what happens uh, besides learn guides and stuff and what happens outside of Adafruit. So in the last week, there were 15 pull requests merged by 10 authors. Um, uh, one new one that I see, or two, maybe two, Strider 21, and also Tushu, Tushu, or Tushui, maybe, and not by nine reviewers. There were nine reviewers, and there were 17 closed issues by eight people and 20 open by 15 people. So we're kind of keeping up, but people are finding new things that are wrong. Um, next up is about the CircuitPython core section, and uh, Scott, if you have time to read that, that'd be great. Yeah, happy to. Um, okay, so for the core, the numbers are 12 pull requests merged from seven different authors, so thank you to all of our authors. We had five reviewers, so thank you to those folks as well. Um, shout out to Gambler21 and Bill88T for being infrequent reviewers. We really appreciate uh, you commenting and reviewing current stuff. We're always looking for more more reviewers because the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. Uh, we have 26 open pull requests. A number of those are draft. Um, so we're getting near that bound that I like to have of uh, fitting all of our open pull requests on a single page. So as always, uh, please take a look at any pull requests that you're involved with and see if you can close them. Issues-wise, we had 13 closed issues by 5 people and 13 opens by 10 people. So uh, we're net zero, which is good for us. Um, and generally, we have uh, a number of folks involved, so that's been great. Um, we have a total of 661 open issues. This does tend to go uh, get larger and larger over time. Um, milestones have changed since last week. We have six active milestones right now. Um, we closed 8xx because we are very, uh, we're almost to the point where we're going to work on 9.0. So we had, uh, as of these stats, we had zero open issues for 8.2, which is the next stable release and likely the last uh, stable release before 9.0 work begins. Uh, we have 38 open issues on 9.0, so lots to do there. Uh, these numbers say six issues not assigned a milestone, but that number should be lower. Um, not assigning a milestone or issues without a milestone are ones that have yet to be triaged. Um, so those are always really good to look at. And the milestone marks are prioritization for generally Adafruit funded folks. So uh, we don't want to deter folks from picking up uh, any issues that are marked uh, kind of long term, which is our bucket of like Adafruit folks are going to do it immediately. Uh, as a reminder, we're we're always happy to review stuff, even if it's not uh, kind of in our, our most important category. Um, so that's it for the core. 
Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, next up is the library section, and Kat, you can read that. Yep. All right, so this section applies to all of the uh, CircuitPython libraries, which includes the uh, all the CircuitPython libraries in the community bundle and all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, as well as a couple extras. So across all of that, we had two pull requests merged um, by two authors and three reviewers. Um, that leaves us with 63 open pull requests, the oldest of which is a thousand days old, but I did notice that uh, this says it's a thousand days old, and if you check circuitpython.org slash contributing, um, it says 999. So I think maybe it just stops there. Um, so don't go search by date number if it's four digits, I guess. Um, and we had four, four issues closed by four people and five open by three people, leaving us with 623 open issues. 46 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list of open pull requests and a list of open issues. If you're interested in contributing by reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you see something you have hardware for, test it. If you uh, don't have the hardware, take a look at the code, see if it looks right for syntax or spelling or other things that you do not need the hardware to figure out and leave a comment and let us know. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. They are spread out by, um, by repository and uh, you can do a find in page um, to search for keywords if there's something you're interested in, or if you're new to everything, you can use the drop down at the top to search uh, good first issues. Those are issues we identified as good for people who uh, are new. Um, if you're new to everything, we have a guide on contributing to Git or contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. And we're always available on Discord to help out. So don't let that part of the process intimidate you. In terms of Library Pi PI weekly download stats, Across 310 libraries, we had 80,564 downloads, and uh, the top 10 uh, library downloads are in the notes. Um, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one updated library, uh, CircuitPython, uh, Adafruit CircuitPython ESP32 SPI, and no new libraries. And that's what I've got. All right. Thank you, Kat D. All right. Uh, next up is the Blinkist section uh, by Maker Melissa. Uh, Melissa, I'm not able to hear you. Okay, so I will go, why don't I just go ahead and read it? Is that okay? Um, so just to explain about uh, Blinka, um, Blinka is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. So uh, it's really, you'll see, and you'll see what we mean by that as we go along. So in the past week, there was one pull request merged by one author, Tushui, and one reviewer was maker Melissa. There are four open pull requests for the Blinker related libraries. There were zero closed issues by zero people and two open by two people. There are 98 open issues currently. In the last week, there were 8,074 PyPy downloads, which is impressive, and there were uh, 6,000... 6,409 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. Currently, we are at 119 supported boards. So that's Raspberry, all Raspberry, Raspberry Pi boards and many, many other kinds of boards. So uh, if you are running uh, CircuitPython, you can run what looks like CircuitPython on a non CircuitPython board um, by using the Blinka uh, compatibility layer. Works really nicely. All right, uh, next up, is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list, which is in alphabetical order mostly, uh, to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll just read your notes when I get them into the, in the list of notes. So starting off here is me and uh, I'd just like to thank Scott and Jeff for this triage meeting we had. Uh, last week for A2O and 8XX issues. So we cleared out all the 8XX issues, pushed a bunch forward to 900 or long-term, 
or said this is we can't reproduce this and we assigned all the A2O issues and uh, they're all finished off as we'll find out later. So thanks a lot, folks. Okay, uh, next up is DJ Devin 3 who's text only, so I'll read theirs. Thanks, Foamy Guy, for a great display I.O. deep dive. Then ended up with him stumbling across a display I.O. dot shapes bug rabbit hole and a really neat git bisecting bug hunt. Okay, and next up is Foamy Guy. Right. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, hug reports this week for me. Thanks to uh, Tyeth, uh, who helped me in figuring out how to use uh, some of the older ways to update submodules when I was having some trouble. Uh, hug report for DJ Devin3 for starting up the process on migrating the newer requests API examples to start using settings.toml file. Um, thank you for uh, to uh, Mark Gambler for helping me troubleshoot um, some errors that were related to submodules, as well as for taking a look uh, at the Shapefix PR and a group hug to everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up is Jeff. Hello there. Um, so this is uh, there we go. My hug reports for the week are a group hug, one for you, Dan, for the 8.2 release candidate. Uh, thank you to the more Lady Ada for continually furnishing interesting projects for me to do. To Scott and Lamore for bringing a little idea I had all the way to being a product in the store, and that is the Sorrel Mounting Grid. And finally to Scott for offering to let me get in the USB weeds with him after my Teddy Ruxpin work is wrapped up. And that's what I got. All right, thank you. And Katni is next. All right, so first up, a hug report to you, Dan, for help with uh, code on a personal project and for looking into and getting in a temporary fix for a bundle release issue over the weekend. Uh, to Foamy Guy for looking into the same bundle release issue uh, before I realized that Dan was working on it at the same time. Um, to Jeff for a lovely chat and a group hug to all. All right, and uh, I'll read uh, Maker Melissa's. Is it my? Can oh, you now hear me? You're yeah. there. Okay. Okay, I just had to change the setting on there. New computer syndrome. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I wanted to give a hug to Blitz City DIY for, or Liz rather, for uh, adding the and the updated seven segment backpack fritzing part so quickly and group hug to everyone else. Okie dokie. All right, and uh, next, next up is. Scott, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, first, a hug to Lady Ada for testing the web workflow and to Maker Melissa for filing issues and following up with fixes on her end. A uh, hug to Jepler for the pipe wire tip. I complained about having audio sync issues, and the pipe wire thing uh, caused me to look at Arch, and Arch is like a rolling distribution, so it never like kind of moves over wholesale. So I, I finally fully switched and, and removed Pulse Audio, and now my audio is synced again, and it's so, so nice. Um, so thanks, Jeff, for the tip about that. And then lastly, hugs to Katni and Toddbot for talking CircuitPython on podcasts. Um, I listened to Toddbot's podcast over the weekend, and it was it's always interesting to hear uh, other pers perspectives on CircuitPython. Thank you, Scott. Okay. And lastly, I'll read Todd Bott's um, uh, reports. Thanks to Jeff for looking at a perennial, usually USB triggered audio glitch and offering a possible lessening of it. Okie dokie. So next up is uh, status updates. We got a timestamp. I accidentally reset my timestamp in computer, so it started over again at zero. So my timestamps will be manual now on. Um, so what is status reports? It's our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and we'll go through the list as before in Hug Reports. When I call on you, you can take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to the in the weeds section. Okay. So starting out, I'll start out. Um, 
So last week I did uh, some pull requests for the remaining A2O issues. They were basically documentation updates. And I moved a couple of other A2O issues uh, to the future because they weren't really uh, critical for A2O. I released A2O RC0. That's release candidate zero. Uh, since then, there are a couple of new fixes and some translations and things like that. And so we'll update that. Um, I'll include them in a final release or make it RC1. Maybe I'll make it RC1 uh, later today so that the transition from RC1 to the final would be um, nothing. Uh, and uh, maybe I can, we could do a final on Wednesday. Uh, as usual, if you have time, please try the RC0 release because we don't know if there are some you know, major uh, regressions on some of the boards that I didn't smoke test. Okay, now I also made a preliminary board definition for the toy hacker bar, bar board. That's the stuff that I mentioned at the top where we were hacking, uh, Lady Ada was hacking the baby Einstein toy. So, and it's running CircuitPython and uh, we, it's what's not kind of nice is that it took about 20 minutes to make a new board definition. That's how well it, easily it, it can be done in CircuitPython. I did some more MicroPython merging last week to merge in uh, version 1.19.1 of MicroPython, but later the A2O took over for me. So as I mentioned this week, I'll probably uh, do A2O releases and then go back to MicroPython merging and try to uh, get that ready for putting checking a domain. Okay, um, next up is Jeff. Hello again. This time I haven't lost my spot, so that's nice. Uh, last week was primarily spent on the Teddy Ruxpin project. And um, right now I have a script that can take in mouth movements that are generated by the Rhubarb software, which is a free GitHub software for making animations that we repurposed for this, um, and take in audio created by running the audio codec on an Android phone, and then add in randomized eye movements so that those uh, LCD eyes are doing something useful. Uh, this So this is pretty much feature complete for what Lamore is looking for, except that the eye animations were running way too often in the demo that I did last week on show and tell. So um, basically what I have left to do on that is to make the eye animations occur less frequently and uh, document it just a little bit in preparation for handing off to a guide author who will probably ask me follow-up questions. Um, over the weekend and then today I had this um, audio problem on the RP2040 on my mind. I realized the cause had to do with how RP2040 DMA descriptors work when you chain to them without having reset the DMA address uh, and that explains what we were seeing or what we were hearing. Um, and so then the question becomes, what do you do? And what I did was made the internal flash write always pause all the audio channels before it started. Um, and that makes the problem largely go away. Um, and Toddbot gave that a stamp of approval in his testing, so I marked it as ready for review. Uh, right, so this week, the um, other stuff that I want to do is test the Pico DVI library updates against the run CPM project. That's not a CircuitPython thing, but um, I do want to help out Phil B by checking out his changes since I'm the one who instigated them. Um, and then the other thing I'm doing is making up a USB host BFF that you could put on a Cutie Pie RP2040 to add USB host capability in a very small form factor. Uh, and in fact, that board is small enough that the A connector won't fit, so it will probably use a micro B connector and require an OTG style cable. Um, I'll maybe have those manufactured and give it a try, but um, also while just getting started, um, Adafruit store has a uh, USB A to uh, header pins or uh, jumper cables cable that I'll be digging out for, for use because this is not needed, this is just, it would be nice. Uh, and that's what I will be up to. Thank you. Okie dokie, okay, thanks, Jeff. All right, um, uh, next up is DJ Devin, who's not here, so I'll read theirs. 
submitted first PR to start the process of importing all Adafruit requests and examples from secrets.py to settings.toml. Going slow with the process intentionally, only submitted one example PR to ensure I'm doing everything correctly before going forward. I'm starting with the 10 examples in the library. I contributed, which start with request underscore API underscore that do not have learn guides associated with them. I don't expect to get into examples which require learn guide changes for a few weeks and will notify Catney when I get there realistically a month from now. This is part of a 9.0 milestone, so plenty of time to do it in phased steps. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, status reports for me this week. I have uh, continued working on the ESP32 SPY socket compatibility. I've done a boatload of extra testing since last week. Submitted a few more PRs in other various related libraries like WSGI and the request library uh, that will go along with the ESP32 SPY one. Um, during that testing, I also uh, tried out the WizNet library using the changed request library from uh, above. And in doing so, noticed uh, an incompatibility over on that side in the WizNet socket that was different from the way that the CPython and now the compatible ESP32 spy sockets behave. Uh, so I submitted a PR to fix that and tested it out with various different examples. Uh, and while working on that, so we're kind of went down the, the Wi-Fi rabbit hole a little bit, but while, uh, or network rabbit hole, I guess I should say. Um, but while working on that, one of the things I wanted to test was HTTP server library. Uh, I found there was no example for that that I was able to find at least, so I created one of those uh, that uses HTTP server over Ethernet uh, in order to run your server um, and submitted a PR with that as well. Um, the other major thing that I worked on that wasn't uh, in the network stuff was uh, some display.io examples that draw various different pride flags. Um, I think I ended up with about 10 different examples that all draw different uh, pride flags and then all use different uh, APIs and uh, functionalities within Display.io. So it kind of serves as uh, example code showing how to do a bunch of different stuff, but obviously also showing uh, support with the flags for Pride Month. Um, while I was working on that, one of the flags I was trying to do was with Display.io Shape, which is one of the probably lesser used APIs, and I discovered that that was no longer behaving how it used to. Uh, tracked down where it changed and figured out how to get it fixed and submitted a PR for that to get back to normal behavior. Uh, and that's what I have been up to. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, next up is Katni. Hello again. So uh, last week, published the I2S BFF guide, finished the DVI Feather uh, review update. Lamore had done a final review on it, and I hadn't gotten back to uh, updating it. And started the Gamepad QT guide. This is a new board that is a um, STEM QT uh, connectable gamepad with uh, six buttons and a joystick on it. Um, I updated the Seesaw library to support it. Um, submitted the CircuitPython demo, or the CircuitPython Seesaw library, submitted a CircuitPython demo to the library along with the update. And uh, the Arduino code is already set to go and went through trying to fix a bundle release issue over the weekend. This week, uh, finish up the Gamepad QT guide. Next up is the Stemma Audio Amp. One of my uh, printing objects has an errant ground pin on it. Um, it's not a high priority, but it is on my list. Um, Personally, I uh, simplified the numpad build I'm doing um, because extending the micro B port from the NRF feather to the back of the case was turning into a bit of a dongle nightmare. Uh, it's now a feather RP2040 standalone with the matrix wired directly to it, oriented so the USB-C port is already facing the back and the reset button is broken out to a button next to the cable on the case. So after rewiring this at least three times, I have no concern about soldering up a new V2 when the time comes. Uh, tested the code, everything's working as intended. My wife is working on the case, which is apparently taking longer than expected, but the design is basically done and it looks great. Uh, learned that Mac keyboards with numpads do not have numlock, and sending a numlock key to Mac OS does absolutely nothing. Um, and finally, I soldered up a QT Pi RP2040 and a NeoKey BFF to build a standalone numpad enter key because it turns out I use that even more than the numpad overall. 
Uh, once it has a case, it'll live next to my keyboard on my mouse pad for happy fun thumb use. Uh, and this will come after the numpad is finished. And also there will be a guide for the enter key. And that's what I've got. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up, make we have Maker Melissa. Oh, so last week I finished updating the RGB Matrix Dreidel game uh, learning guide to work on with I2S audio. Um, it, I updated the 1.2 inch seven segment LED backpack guide and uh, fixed the tab key and add some hotkeys to the CircuitPython code editor. So we can, I'm going to continue working on some of the CircuitPython code editor bugs. And um, we need to update the missing boards on circuitpython.org. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Okay, and Scott is up next. All right, hello. Uh, I've been in USB host land. Uh, I started in the IMXRT, and if I've gotten it like somewhat working, like I showed it on show and tell, but it's still kind of flaky. And I suspect it's due to missed cache invalidations and cleans, which is uh, really unfun to run down. <laughs> um, so what I did is I started working the RP2040 USB host port, which um, it will be nice to have another implementation to compare to. And it's one that we know we want to do, so it's it's fine to spend the time on. Um, it has its own challenges because it's using two... PIOs and running uh, the interrupt on the multi-core, so uh, I've made pretty good progress, but I'm still debugging it. Um, kind of relatedly, my brain's been thinking a lot about how Linker, the Linker could do a better job of moving code that we want to say, run this code without uh, when Flash is busy. Um, I've been thinking about that and, and hacking on LLVM to make it do that. Um, and then I've also been trying to figure out why code size, when compiled with LLVM, known as, also known as Clang, um, Clang is the, the command you actually run, why code size is larger. Because if I made LLVM work, I, I would probably want to switch this whole hog over. So I've been poking that kind of in my, in my like, I need a break time. Um, so that's the main things I'm doing. Uh, a late thank you to Foamy Guy for making the ESP32 spy socket C Python compatible. That's something I wanted to do ages ago, and and running all the, these issues down and doing all this testing is exactly why I didn't do it. So thank you, Foamy Guy, for doing that. Um, I really appreciate it. It's great to have things be all compatible. And then just a uh, scheduling note for me: I'm out Thursday, Friday, and then Monday, Tuesday for a long Fourth of July weekend, which is Independence Day here in in the U.S. Um, in addition to that, next week, Ari, my son, is starting daycare. Um, so we're going to figure out that schedule, and it may be a bit fragmented next week as well. So um, in the end, it'll be good because he'll be going to daycare. Uh, but we're in a transition phase the next couple weeks, so I may be around off and on a bit more than I normally am. Okay, thanks, Scott. Okay, next up, I'll read uh, Todd Bot's um, in the contribution. Uh, worked on supporting some of my Mozy experiments, synth tools to synth, synth toys to synth IO. It can be done and sounds pretty great. Examples up on my YouTube, and there's a link in the notes doc. And that's it for status updates. Finally, we have in the weeds. And right now, uh, that's probably just a logistical question. Uh, Jeff, you want to go ahead and pose that question? Uh, sure. I realized that um, I think it's next week is, as Scott was mentioning, the U.S. national holiday on Tuesday the 4th. And I just wanted to uh, find out if anybody else was going to be out on Monday the 3rd. And if so, maybe we should move the meeting possibly to Wednesday or we can still hold it on Monday. Um, all right. Katni says, I will be out, but I don't think moving it to Wednesday makes sense. We can just have a small meeting. Um, let's see. I guess Liz isn't here today to touch base with her and make sure she'll be here. Uh, if the consensus is not to move it and Liz can't make it, I can run the meeting and it'll probably be a small group. Uh, will you be around, Dan? I I will be here, but we have a house guest and ah. we're going to have a barbecue the next day, so it might be a light day. 
for me. I mean, we could cancel it. So that's a possibility too. Um, well, I think it would be best if we could uh, make a decision yeah. now. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, if it's likely to be a low attendance meeting, we should probably just uh, skip it and remove it from the calendar. Yeah, because we've done that around um, the December holidays. So um, I think we could just do that. All right. Katni also says canceling is what she would suggest. So yeah, that's fine um, me too. All right. I will go edit the, after this meeting, I will go edit the calendar ICS file to reflect that. And then Dan, you'll create the note stock with the, for the 10th. Uh, correct date yeah. for the, that'll be the 10th then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Um, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for June 26th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated, whether uh, live or by contributing notes, or even by watching our videos or the podcast. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, and those of the work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. We'll re release a video of this meeting on YouTube at youtube.com/adafruit. And the podcast will be available on major Adafruit's major major uh, podcast major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit AdafruitDaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. So as and then to repeat, the next meet there is no meeting next week. There'll be a meeting in two weeks, uh, Monday, July tenth, twenty twenty three. And also to remind you, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord. You can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. And uh, if you want to know more and be notified of scheduling, add, 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 ask to be added to the at sign circuit Pythonista's role on Discord. So we hope to see you all in two weeks. Thank you, everybody. And I will stop recording.